So hello and welcome to all the UPSC aspirants into the Abhimanyu IAS. My name is Pravesh Watts and I welcome you all into my concept series where every week I come with number of topics which have higher relevance for the UPSC exam. So today our topic is the theory of judicial restraint which is an alternative of the judicial activism. We have studied about judicial review, PIL and number of things but today we will study about the judicial restraint theory which is very popular and the need of the hour for the Indian context. And those students who want to join my Indian Polity module, they may see this chart and every information is available on this page. So let's see what this theory talks about. Theory of judicial restraint has come recently because of a number of reasons. So we will be looking number of reasons ki kya karan hai jiske wajay se hume zaruri hai cheez ko padna. So the prime reason is the judicial activism. And the judicial activism has come from the judicial review power of the Supreme as well as the High Courts in India. Judicial review is a power which is to examine the legality and constitutionality of the legislative enactment and the executive order of the central as well as of the state governments and in which the courts examine that whether the authority who has framed any such legislative or the executive action is taking the fundamental rights of a citizen or not and if it and if any government is taking that so that law will be made null and void unconstitutional it also examines that the authority who is kind of you know having that kind of competency kya uske paas aise competency thi ki usne aise action liya so that will also become a matter of judicial review so in the form of judicial review after some time came the theory of judicial activism which is called judicial decision making and the idea was to fill the political or the legislative vacuum. In simple meaning, jahaan jahaan par parliament ya state legislature kanun nahi bana paati hai because of multiple reasons. Vahaan par judiciary take the idea of social engineering and judiciary comes into the picture and makes a kind of judicial law and recommends to the government to implement that. Judicial activism became too much popular in the umbrella of judicial review but after some time when the judiciary was going to a large extent and was crossing its limit into the form of separation of powers under the article 50 then came the idea of judicial restraint and the person who gave this idea of judicial restraint is no one else but the chief justice of India Shri K.G. Balakrishnan in the year 2007. So one by one we'll be, we'll be looking what it all about. So it, it is an alternative of judicial activism I just mentioned. The prime examples or the popular examples I can give is that on the pollution. Pollution was a matter which was highly debatable by the central and the state governments. So what judiciary did, judiciary came into the picture and they said that we should form a kind of tribunal to deal with the environment matters. And that tribunal is called National Green Tribunal formed. And that was a decision of the judiciary and implemented on the basis of the judicial recommendations. Aise aise or kafi mudde hain jinme judiciary ne apne apne alag alag judicial decision making ki hai. But now we are seeing the diminishing role of the judiciary because of the criticism which our judiciary is getting in the form of crossing its limits. Because it is considered as against the parliamentary form of government. India is a parliamentary form of government where the parliament is supreme. The reason being the parliament represent the popular sovereignty or the general will of the civil society. We provide them votes to represent us. We do not provide votes to the judiciary. So we can change the, we can change the government, we cannot change the judiciary. So that makes more accountable and more transparent the parliament instead of judiciary. And that is why we have parliamentary form of government which is accountable and fulfilling the ideals of democracy. So judicial activism is an uh, judicial restraint theory is an alternative of judicial activism. What judicial activism is I mentioned. Then it was propounded by Chief Justice of India Shri Kiji Balakrishnan in the year 2007. It is based on the principles of non-interference and functional specialization. The meaning of non-interference is simply to not interfere in each other's works. What the work have been assigned to me I should do my work only, I should not interfere in my companion or in my colleague's work. And this functional specialization is simply 
that I am functionally specialized in one particular field, so I should stay in that particular field. I should not try to influence someone's other field. These two ideas are very important if we study in the political science optional also, because in political science optional also, number of Western political thinkers have mentioned this that if we abide by these two principles of non-interference and functional specialization. So, this will lead through eudaimonia or the ultimate happiness or the wisdom in the society, right. So, to continue with that same wisdom, we have to consider these two principles, especially in the context of our judiciary and the parliament. Then identify court as undemocratic, unelected and non-responsive. Obviously, our courts are undemocratic because in the democracy, the election is a soul of the democracy. So, they are not elected people and non-responsive. Judges are not responsible to us, but parliamentarians are responsible to us because every five years, they come to us to demand votes from us, but judges never come. They are the executive, they are kind of executive, though they are not executive, but they are kind of executive who are selected, who are not, who are appointed, who are not elected. Right. After this, representing no popular sovereignty, our judges do not represent popular sovereignty, which is the collective wisdom or the collective votes of the of the civil society. But the parliament does so because we provide votes to the parliament. We do not provide votes to the judiciary. And parliament caters to the needs of civil society. They make laws which people demands. They take back laws which people do not demands. But the judiciary's role is somewhat problematic in this area. Against separation of power doctrine, we have a separation of power doctrine which is also propounded as basic structure doctrine principle in the famous case Bharati case 1973. In this case, it was propounded that every organ of the government, whether it is a judiciary or the legislature or the executive have been assigned different sort of roles under the constitution. And every constitutional authority under the head of government should abide and should try to figure out their own work rather than crossing their limits and crossing boundaries of theirs to enter into others boundary. Then no scope of judicial adventurism because in the judicial activism what used to happen in some earlier days is that judges were becoming so much enthusiastic that they were taking judicial activism as judicial dynamism and judicial adventurism. They were taking some political issues just to getting name and fame and to do adventure kind of thing. So, they were not abiding by the laws, they were not abiding by the constitution which not only prevented the judges but also put it under, put it them under a kind of sign and that sign is considered as a bad for Indian judiciary because we have higher respect, higher dignity, higher aut autonomy for our judiciary. Then no administrative expertise. Our CJ Balakrishnan said that courts, disc uh, that courts criticize the parliament that they are not performing their works well. The votes have been provided to them, but they are not taking rational decisions. But the CJ Balakrishnan mentioned and opined to the court also that you cannot simply blame the parliamentarians that they are not doing their work properly. The same kind of blame and allegation can be on you also if we see number of pendency of cases into the court, whether it is the high court, supreme court and subordinate courts. And obviously, the prime reason is the lack of criminal justice system and pendency of um, uh, appointments of the judges. And he was saying that you are not the suitable person to to uh, bring them into the court. It is the people who have been given them votes and it is their responsibility to put them down and to take back their voices from them in the next elections. Because judges role is to give justice. Judges role is not to interfere into the parliament work. Impact on independence on judiciary because of allegation and direct criticism. Now what we are witnessing is that our judiciary what was a picture in some earlier days that judiciary was highly respected and judiciary was considered as a temple of Indian democracy, not the parliament. Why so? Because 
of the nave and the political interest parliament was fulfilling and the judi and the judiciary was taking rational decisions as per the constitutional principles but after the passage of time what we are seeing is that digressing and the degenerating role of the indian of the indian judiciary that when they are taking decisions in affiliation to the executive government sometimes and getting political motivated sometimes and third reason is pre retirement benefits to post uh, pre retirement judgments to post retirement benefits all these are the major reasons because of which our judges are also getting criticized these days and that puts a dent on the independence of judiciary because in the constitution it is mentioned under different articles that we have to maintain the sacredness and the sovereignty of our indian judiciary so the cgi balakrishnan cautioned the judicial system of india that you should refrain from entering into executive and the legislative works the reason you will enter so not only the people but also the parliament will ask you number of questions which will be difficult for the judiciary to answer in an appropriate manner so this much was in the theory of judicial restraint i have mentioned from the context of judicial activism judicial review and i have mentioned that what kind of reforms and the recommendations the cj balakrishnan mentioned in the form of judicial restraint theory and it is very important and highly important to understand these two principles of functional specialization and non interference to not only create trust into the government but also to maintain a healthy country and a democratic and republic country in india so this much was in this video thank you so much we'll meet on the next day on the next topic thank you